Hello, once again, ladies and gentlemen, my name is James Phoenix, and welcome to another episode of Around the Pound. Uh, technically the first episode of Around the Pound, since we've uh, changed the name from formerly the X-Pound Roundtable. And uh, this will be for any group videos we do that don't fit in any of our categories, will be considered part of the Around the Pound. And this could technically also be the last, if you believe those silly mountains. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> But as the, as, the, as the meme says, the mind counter says danger, but the Oreo says we're okay. <laughs> Anywho, uh, this is Around the Pound's Year in Review Awards. Uh, for those of you who are uh, longer-running fans of us, you might remember that we normally do, or formerly used to do, a month in review awards for just the wrestling. Um, we haven't done that in a couple of months. We got a little bit behind, and by the time something got edited, it just... It wasn't worth it posting it because it was already outdated, and we do thoroughly apologize for that. Uh, we're going to try to be a little more loose with our videos, maybe do specific subjects rather than just, you know, a, a month in review every time. That way we get a little more interesting on it. But I digress. Uh, this is our year in review, which will include everything that's reviewed by the various reviewers of the X-Pound. Um, from television to film to video games, wrestling, of course, and a variety yeah, of other yeah. things. So, what's that? and beyond and beyond exactly to infinity and beyond copyright disney corporation <laughs> so uh with that said this will be a two-part uh video here this first part that you're listening to right now will be our best awards uh we have we have nine awards and then the second video will feature the um the same uh nine awards but the worst equivalent so that'll be all the worst awards of basically the same thing. So, you know, with that said, you know, we may have more to say in that video because let's face it, people read, talking about things on the internet usually have more to say about negative things, but we'll see how that goes. We're not trolls. Well, or are we? You three aren't trolls. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So uh, with that said, we're going to start off with the, uh, the best awards here. As I said, um, I should probably introduce everybody. Uh, joining me. Uh, are the rest of the big four. Um, my COO and uh, number two man from Showtime, Marcus Shadow. It's Showtime. From the gaming zone and the comic zone, Chris, a.k.a. The Mole. Hello. And the stay-at-home dad gamer, Richter Hammer. Yo. Yo. So we're going to, as I said, kick off with the best awards here, and uh, we're going to have the first award read off by Chris The Mole. And the first one is for the best wrestler slash diva slash team. And I mean Eva or, or not. They're all the same person. <laughs> but still, I gave my one to do, 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 the greatest man that ever lived, Austin Aries. Good choice. Good choice. Nice it up. Nice it up. It's been a pretty good year for him. He's had the title. He's had some amazing ass matches. So, yeah, I gave it to Austin Aries. I guess I'll go with mine. Um, I gave oh, mine okay. to Kane and Daniel Bryan. Team Hell No, because God damn it, they made WWE entertaining this year. WWE was entertaining? I must have missed that week. <laughs> 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 yeah, for better or for worse, I gotta go with that. They they were the most entertaining team I've seen this year. Because, you know, may, maybe Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara are more entertaining, but I I can't see them, apparently. <laughs> so. They're entertaining when they don't injure themselves. Oh, okay. Mm. Mr. Phoenix. Hashtag, hashtag I agree with Marcus and Richter. <laughs> um, I, I, too, gave it to Team Hell No. Uh, I thought they did a great job this year while they, you know, might not necessarily advance their indiv individual careers all that far. Um if anything, they Keynes did. is taking a step back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Just a lot. Uh, they were very entertaining. They did make uh, did make WWE extremely entertaining this year. Um, and they did capture the tag team titles and are still the current tag team champions. And Daniel Bryan. <laughs> and <laughs> so, therefore, um, I, I, get, yeah, I gave my award to them. I really thought throughout the course of the year, I think the tag team was formed and then built up. I think they've really done a good job being entertaining. Uh, both in the ring and out with some of these comedy sketches. And I think that, uh, you know, well, certainly being a comedy wrestler is not something you want to necessarily aspire to. 
Um, they're doing a good job of it right now. It's something that's keeping them on the air and, you know, supporting the WWE and giving them something constant and refreshing and funny they can go back to. It's always good to have some comedy. Like, as of today when we were filming this, which was the Slammies, they had some hilarious scenes backstage with Ric Flair. And I'm sorry, the most fun, hilarious scene of the entire night for me was when Daniel Bryan runs out, tries to get his Slammy, and Kane carries him off as he's still going, no, no, yeah, no, was... and waving his arm. <laughs> Yeah. Did Kane take the slammy? For better or for worse, Kane and Daniel Bryan have brilliant comedic timing. They're like, they're, for those of you who know us, this is a uh, reference you'll probably get. They're the bulk and skull of WWE. (laughs) Yes. I call it just Kane's version of Spike. (laughs) (laughs) Ha! And so our next award is the best wrestling storyline for this year. And um, as a bit of a rehash here, I'm I'm going with when uh, Team Hell No was forming, like all that stuff was funny with the anger management courses, and when they went to the uh, to the IHOP or whatever it was, Denny's I think it was, and uh, even though it was a bit predictable, it was still funny and it was entertaining, and I liked it. Fair enough. I'll have to agree with uh, my partner in crime over here. I have to go with I'm the tag team champions. Just because their whole storyline was just awesome, entertaining, and actually kind of made me want to watch. Which, yeah, that, that a lot of what WWE stands made me not want to watch. Um, as a runner-up, because it just kind of started, so I wouldn't really consider it a storyline for this year. But um, The Miz and Alberto Del Rio v. The Shield. Not The Shield, v. Uh, Free Man Band. That storyline so far is pretty cool because... They Miz and Del Rio get to bring back like old like legends and stuff and showcase them and and at the same time do kind of a face turn for Alberto and further cement the face turn for the Miz, which I think is kind of awesome. Very true, very true. And hey, we get to see more of Drew McIntyre, and that's always good. That is always good. That is always good. You guys. Hello? I was waiting for Jim. Oh, and am I am I the next one? Okay. Um. Well, for my best storyline, I tried to th- I tried to think back. I mean, the immediate ones came to mind. The Daniel Bryan thing, uh, Crazy AJ came to mind. But I was going to think of exactly uh, exactly what I wanted to, you know, go for. And uh, I tried to think back in the year to what other big storylines were. Uh, you know, were happening during the course of the year to try to get to think of anything, you know, not immediately recent, that, but that did happen this year that might have fit the category. And as I thought back to it, I realized there actually was. And while I, I believe, if memory serves, the storyline was technically first established in uh, a point in 2011, but shortly after, but with, in, in 2012 was when it really took off and really uh, peaked at WrestleMania, and that was the return of The Rock. Just the entire story of him returning, the whole, you know, never before, never again thing at WrestleMania. Yes, it was cheesy. Yes, we knew that wasn't really true. But, you know, just seeing seeing The Rock beat up John Cena was just worth it in many, many, many ways. Technically, I've given it that too. Only I remembered that Never Before and Never Again was Survivor Series, and WrestleMania was once in a lifetime. I apologize. You're right. Wrong you, catch for me. You just got served. I did just get served. <laughs> but no, yeah, I, I agree. Technically, it started, like you said, like 2010, I believe, because The Rock came back, when he started to host World, and he hosted WrestleMania of 2011. Well, that's true, yeah, because he came back and he hosted yeah. it, and that was the big deal, and then it really it said and one then year ahead. So. It just kept going for like a whole year, but but like like Jim said, the January to the WrestleMania, which is 2012, it did, it did take off, and I enjoyed the storyline. It, it, they, they did everything they could to make it feel like a big storyline. They even released a DVD of just that storyline. That's how big this was, which that's kind of cool. They even created an aired a TV special that aired on uh, USA Network, and I think later on Sci-Fi of just a storyline. 
I believe that's all. I believe that's what's going to be on the DVD minor with with the DVD probably getting like an extra feature or two. Well, probably that. And the ability yeah, to fast forward probably... every scene with Cena. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll probably show some of the some of the like the full promos and everything leading up to it and whatnot. Probably some backgrounds of the guys. Yep. But yeah, that's mine. Who's next? That, I was agreeing with you. I just that was that was mine. Yeah, so you're okay. next. It's it's you to give the next award. Okay. Well, the next award, straight out of Rise from the Airwaves, is the best new the best uh, TV show. Um, we subdivided this category. Uh, so there's actually two. It's best um, best new TV series, which would be a series that was created and first premiered within the course of 2012, a brand new one, and then also. For a recurring TV series, best season of a, of a series that existed prior to 2012, but which is still on the air uh, this year and which had a, a good season for the year. Or two seasons, depending on if you subscribe as TV Crab, where fall season is one thing and then spring season, uh, I don't know. No, if it's at least on DVD and it's one season, it's one season. Fair enough. So, uh,. Uh, like I, said, I subdivided mine. I'm, I gave my my uh, my new TV show to Revolution on NBC. Um, it's gotten a lot of mixed reaction from what I've read in magazines and things. I really like the show. I think it's highly entertaining. I think it's a really good show. Uh, for those of you who may not have seen it, it's a storyline about what would happen to the world if all of a sudden all advanced technology and electronic devices stopped working, and the world's kind of reverted back to a simpler time. Uh, Please go see our review now for further. Details. <laughs> yeah, it's a receipt our review of the pilot for further information, but it's a really good series. Um, it's hard if all the electrical equipment stops working. <laughs> <laughs> Go before next Friday. <laughs> yes, but I digress. Um, there's a lot of uh, great characters in that, great driving storylines, I think. Um, in your review or in the show? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's, 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 a, it's a review. Unfortunately, because somebody in the x doesn't like storylines or reviews, we can't do them. That is true. But I digress. It's a really great show. I enjoy it. Um, it has gotten, like I said, a lot of mixed reviews. I've heard some people say it's, you know, it's uh, now it's starting to, you know, the, the viewership has gone down since the premiere, but it's still pretty steady. And all, you know, the people are saying, like, well, you know, it's now it's not, not interesting now that we kind of somewhat know how, why the power went out, blah, blah, blah. But I think it's still got a lot of potential for where it could go. Simply because it's not just a whole, you know, had the power return back on. It's also that, um, what do you call it there? Uh, ethical choice of do we want to turn the power back on? Is that beneficial? What's the deal? So. Of course, he's been a lot of for years. This is true. But he didn't actually write most of that. So. Um. Hello, Jim. You're breaking up. Hello. 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 He's Hello. not breaking up to me. Well, you were breaking up there for a minute when you were talking. So. But I apologize. It's going to sound like on the recording. Hmm. I do apologize. I'm sorry, but continue. But anyway, so basically, uh, for a recurring show, um, I was thinking about what I wanted to use it for. It was an interesting choice. Uh, I ended up using it for. Uh, I ended up going with Person of Interest because that is Next Revolution, one of my other favorite shows on TV right now. Um, it was created in 2011 when it premiered. It's the second season. Uh, is in progress, they're on the fall hiatus now, but it is a uh, really great, uh, a really great show. It's about uh, uh, a man played by Michael Emerson, who is this really rich guy and master computer hacker. But everybody, uh, he's desperate, and he built this machine that watches everyone in the, the world at all times that the government now has that he sold to them, and is a to watch for terrorists. But it also finds it's just people that could be victims, perpetrators, or uh, witnesses to violent crimes. And so Michael Emerson's character, Mr. Finch, hires uh, Jim Caviezel's character, Mr. Reese, to be a field agent and to identify you know, these people because once all they get is a social security number. And so he hires them to identify these people and protect them or stop them depending on who they are. And so it's a lot of interesting storylines going for all this you know, underground stuff that they're working with because neither of them exist as far as anyone knows. Um, they fight a lot of different people. They fight HR, the group of corrupt cops. They're fighting some mafias. It's a really cool show. And it really gets you thinking about, you know, 
it, it's got kind of a big brother feel to it to a point about, you know, someone's watching it all times, but <clears throat> it's really interesting to see what people will do to have control of something like that. And also, you know, the type of things that someone, you know, you know that, that, that Finch and Reese go through to try to help these people even though, even though they've never met them. So it's a really good show. I like it. It's gotten steady ratings on CBS since it premiered as uh, – I guess it was like the, the highest rated premiere, premiere on CBS in like years and years, and it's really been a big deal. So I, I recommend both of those two shows. Um, I said both are, both are on hiatus right now, but uh, I'm presuming they'll return sometime in the spring. Revolution is on Monday nights at 10. Person of Interest is on Thursday nights at 9 on CBS. And do be sure to go check out James Phoenix's upcoming review of Person of Interest. On Rise from the Airways. Yes, I, I, I will eventually film that and get that up. I've been doing that for a long time. It just keeps slipping on the schedule. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, I'm going to agree with James. My best new TV show is Revolution, primarily because it's the only other TV show I watch aside from Monday Night Raw. <laughs> but it is a really good show. I need to catch up on it. Um, and given that Raw is the only other show I watch, yeah, I, I don't really have a recurring because, yeah, I can't really call Raw good. Ouch. You say SmackDown. I don't actually watch it. Okay. Uh, for uh, for my <clears throat> TV show, I didn't split them up. So uh, basically, I have for best TV show recurring is Transformers Prime, and uh, I just started the second season because it finally, just in the last weeks, I guess, got uh, slipped onto Netflix, so it counts as current. But uh, it. What I like about it is that even though it's like that, you know, they kind of look Michael Bay style, it's one of the more recent Transformer shows that I've actually liked. I haven't really watched or been much interested in the TV show since Beast Wars way back when. So I'm actually really excited that they have one that I'm interested in. And I, it's just really cool to watch. And I get to watch it with my kids and I get to bore them by talking about all this stuff that they don't care about or understand. So that's fine. Prime does kick ass. I'm waiting for that. I'm hoping Prime Series 1 and 2 come on the UK Netflix because I haven't seen Season 2 yet. Yeah, I just started. <laughs> but, yeah, I, 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 sp- I split on my one. Uh, new TV show, I gave mine to the brand new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle series. Every episode is either hilarious or funny, and at the same time, they can make certain, they can just make scenes completely badass. Like, suddenly they're joking around with Shredder's two minions, then suddenly Shredder comes out and just wastes the turtles in like five minutes, just completely fucking pwns them, and you're like, holy crap, that was awesome. But yeah, at the same time, they'll then turn around and make a complete joke out of something in the next scene, so it's got that humor from. The horrible 80s cartoon, but it's got the good stuff from the 2003 one too, which was the better show. So that's pretty cool. Cool. And for reoccurring, I gave it to The Vampire Diaries Season 4. Because, let's face it, with Season 4 coming up, they've added new elements to the show. Like, now we're getting, like, Vampire Hunters, which in turn evolves one of the characters who, since Season 1, his only role in the series has been... (laughs) Be the little annoying brother and get put on a bus. I mean, literally, he's been put on a bus multiple times and sent away for his own good. And every time that happens, the bad guy's always tracking down. And then he comes back and gets put in the mix again. But now he's actually badass to the point where he looked at the main character, one of the main characters in the eyes, in one of the episodes a couple of weeks ago, and just stabbed him through the chest and goes, oh, what do you know? I can't, I can't be compulsed anymore. Mm. Oh, I can't be compelled, sorry. I can't be compelled anymore. And just walks off, leaving the guy stabbed for the chest. I'm like, that's badass. It, which is cool. It's added, and it, of course, it's given us delay, you know, which I've been excited for for a while. They fucked that up, but they've given it to us. So, yeah, that was, that was my choice. Awesome. Well, we'll move on to my category. The best film of 2012. Now, up until this last Saturday, my choice was The Amazing Spider-Man because it was a great film. Probably, in my opinion, the best superhero film that came out this year and the superhero film that's been made in a while. And then this Saturday, I saw The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, and holy crap, that movie is awesome. Um, I saw it in HFR 3D. That is high frame rate 3D, 3D 
filmed in high def at 48 frames a second. That is the way to see that movie. It is beautiful. It is awesome. There's pluses and minuses. I uh, do plan to do a review of the movie, so do catch that. But suffice it to say, yeah, it's definitely worthy of uh, movie of the year. Will your review be in HFR 3D? <laughs> no. No, but will be reviewed by a hobbit. 3 frames a second. Oh! Oh! I, I'm sorry, that wasn't nice. Do they have Asian hobbits? Is that allowed? <laughs> Go Continue. Okay, for my best film, I picked uh, God Bless America. If you've never seen that film, you should. It's real. The basic plot is there's a guy, and he's been told by his doctor that he has a brain tumor and he's going to die. So what he does with his remaining... Is it a tapes, comedy? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a dark comedy. <clears throat> and he, he goes around and, ba- well, through some happenstance, he just basically goes around and kills the dregs of society like uh, you know, uh, reality TV show people and whiny rich bitches and, you know, stupid shock jocks from like Fox News and stuff. It's just it's a great parody of American culture. And it's awesome, too, because not only does it have violence, but it's funny. So if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, I was going to pick Avengers, but that I when I thought about it, I got to go with God Bless America. Uh, OK, I'll, I'll be honest. I was, I'll, I'll be honest, I was joking when I asked, was it a comedy? Because I, I haven't seen what that film was about. But based on that, I'm going to actually have to check that film out. <laughs> I That's probably will check that out. Funny. But I gave mine to The Avengers Assemble. I'm sorry, it was written by Josh Whedon. It had six movies build up, so the hype was awesome. And when you went in there, it's one of the few films where it's had this incredible hype where you've sat down and you've not been like, Okay, yeah, that's kind of disappointing. I'm looking at you, Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> but yeah, agree with them all. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was just an awesome film. Hulk was awesome. Josh Whedon wrote, wrote it completely well. Even characters that weren't in the previous six movies, when they were in this, like Hawkeye and stuff, they were awesome. It was awesome to see it. The film was very well done. It's probably the best superhero film that came out this year. I agree. Jim. Although, although I will say Dread is an honourable runner-up. <clears throat> okay. um, hashtag I wrote the mole. For best film, I also I gave it to The Avengers. They didn't add the assembles of the title over here. And uh, I, I really I really love the movie. Um, I did see all the movies that led up to it uh, before it came out. Um, I know some people didn't. And uh, I, I thought it was an, an amazing movie. I really did. I, I, I intend to get it on Blu-ray when I have a chance. I, it's on my Christmas list. If I don't get it, then I'm just going to pick it up whenever. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I really love the movie. Um, even, you know, even though, like, the Incredible Hulk happened far enough before it that I couldn't, I didn't exactly remember the details of it when Avengers happened. And uh, the guys who had to explain one or two things to me about the Hulk in that movie, it's still a great movie. I still loved it. And I've only seen like three movies this year, and that was the best one. So you need to get out more. Well, you I need to pie a bit more. I mean, yes, get out more. <laughs> no, I was like, I've seen other movies, just not movies that have come out this year. I saw movies from 2011 that I didn't get a chance to see. I saw them on DVD. Oh, oh have you not had the chance to see Peter Jackson's three hour remake of Two Girls, One Cup? <laughs> <laughs> on Blu ray with digital copy. Yep, also in that high speed 3D. <laughs> If you haven't seen it in 40, 48 frames a second 3D, you haven't seen Two Girls, One Cup. One <laughs> Cup. <laughs> okay, more. But yeah, and so that leads us to the next one, which the next category is the best video game. And I will point out these are, with these, they're, they're not really best, they're our favorites. I gave mine to Zombie You just because. Honestly, the multiplayer is unbelievably fun. The single player is actually a survival horror. Looking at you, Resident Evil. <laughs> and it, it just tr- dares to try and be different. So many games now where I go, okay, this game's done this. 
and it's popular, let's just lash on to this. This one's like, no, screw that. Let's make it survival. Let's use the Wii U gamepad, the touchscreen stuff. Let's make it so you actually feel scared when you're playing this game. And if you're playing through the single player, there is elements of, oh my God, I'm about to die here. Shit. Oh crap. <laughs> it's awesome. They've done a good job with that. I My best speak. video game, uh, I, I went with Lego Batman to DC Superheroes. Um, it was, to the best of my recollection, the first uh, Lego game that Traveler's Tales did where they used voice acting, yeah. and it, it worked. Because you still got the humor and the comedy that you know their Lego games are known for. And the voice actors they got, they got, for the most part, new voice actors, especially for the big roles of like Superman, Batman, Joker, etc., and they all did really, really well with it. And then, of course, the really, really awesome touch they put in is when you play a Superman and you're in Gotham City. If you fly, you get the classic theme. It, it doesn't get much better than that, flying around as Superman, shooting things with your heat vision with the classic theme playing behind you. I'm sorry, it doesn't. Check out my Marcus Shadows review for that. Indeed. Yes. Although I will say, just to piggyback <laughs> off what Marcus said then, the voice acting and stuff was so good in that game, and they did such a good job with the scenes and stuff in Lego Batman 2. They're turning all the cut scenes into an actual movie because people have requested it and fleshing out the bits in the middle of new animation. I'm releasing a Lego Batman film. So buying that, even though I know what happens. <laughs> so reviewing that, even though I know what happens. <laughs> may I join you for revenge? You may. Okay, for my best game, I chose Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Really, this game delivered on the promise that Fable had oh so many years ago, and it was really immersive, it had good choices, and it just had a great freedom in it. The game was really engaging, and I loved playing it, and it was, I pretty much hyped it up for myself, because it took me a long time before I actually was able to buy it, and it pretty much delivered on all the hype that I had given it to myself after playing the demo. And it's the game I spent the most time with this year, so it had to. I had to go with that. You don't want. You don't want to hype yourself too hard. You'll go blind. I know. I got mm. better. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Jim, <clears throat> was that an in joke that I didn't get? No, Monty Python. Ah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, best video game. <clears throat> Again, I uh, I didn't play. I I've bought a number of video games this year. Unfortunately, most of them were older games that did not actually come out this year. I.e. Portal 2, Mortal Kombat, uh... Etc, etc. Etc, etc, etc. Um, I only bought a, a few video games that actually came out this year. Although, I may, I, I may have PlayStation All-Stars Battle Run before the end of the year. Um, but just overall, I gotta give this game to Assassin's Creed 3. Because uh, I haven't gotten that far into it yet. I'm not even at the point where you switch from the initial character over to Connor, the actual main assassin of the, the Assassin's Creed game. But uh, it's pretty, it's really cool so far. I haven't played any of the other games in the series, and I only have it because it came with the 500 gig PS3 that I bought. But uh, it's a really cool game. Um, the, the the mechanics of uh, you know running around, uh, you know, jump, being able to run around, jump over things fluidly, attack, and all this interesting stuff. Um, you know, plus it's taking place in, you know, in a famous historical period. I have a history degree. I'm a big history buff. So that, that really touched me, uh, you know, touched my history buff side too. And so, uh, I really like that. So it's, it's been a great game so far. I, I hear it only gets better from what I've heard about where the game goes from here. Um, you know, as I get through, I'm certainly going to play more of it. Um, it's a good game. Runner up PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royal. I played the beta demo that they had up for download for a brief period of time. It only had about eight characters in it, but it was awesome. You know, the characters all had very unique fighting styles, unique moves, and you could do a lot of damage with any particular character. And the characters, you know, different people had different characters that fit them. Like, uh, of the eight that were there, I did best with Kratos personally, while Marcus did better with uh, Sly Cooper. So it, it, it was cool to see the variance in who was good with which characters, too. So i uh, definitely buying that when I have a chance, uh, again, hopefully for Christmas. And, uh, yeah, that, that's a runner-up. That's Creed 3. I have to interject here before the next review gets read off. I just want to point out when James, when James mentioned 
Portal 2. Fun fact for everyone to go out and check it, the film out when it comes out. The movie Pacific Rim features the voice of GLaDOS digitally analyzed to sound exactly like GLaDOS again. Hmm. Wow, really? So watching that film. Yes, and it's giant. It's people inside giant robots fighting giant monsters. At last, someone's made that concept good. I'm looking at you, Saban. Oh! <laughs> oh! Mm. Ouch! I was gonna say I'm looking. I was gonna say I'm looking at you, real steel. <laughs> Ouch they again! Inside the robots. Hmm. They were not inside the robots. No, they weren't inside the robots, but they still control well, the robots. Well, especially he, especially he was inside the robot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, he wasn't inside the robot. He, he was directly controlling it. I mean, Hugh Jackson was shadow boxing with the fucking thing to make it work at the end. So. And this yes. pr- further <laughs> proves James is asexual. <laughs> yep. But I thought the GLaDOS thing was worth mentioning because it, it's cool, and if you like Portal, you're probably going to want to check out that film. That is cool, yes. And for reference, though, that's called professionalism and not dignifying the dirty joke in the middle of a review. He's going to cut it. <laughs> no, no, I won't cut it. it was, I won't cut it. It was a good joke, I'm just saying. If you were professional, you wouldn't have been 17 minutes late. <laughs> oh! Oh! Touche, touche, but I'm sorry, you know. I'm like some people, I have to work all year round. Okay, children. <laughs> Mommy, daddy, don't fight. And the point is moot anyway, because Mo has a part-time job now anyway. Yeah, and it was, it, I just said it because it amused me. Yeah. But yeah. next to us to read off is... Rick me. And next up is the best toy release. And uh, given how much I buy Transformers, not as much as I used to, though, I gave it to the uh, Prime Vehicon, which is just it's really well done in the in the vehicle form. If you've never seen Prime, kind of looks like a, like almost a little bit like a Batmobile to me. And it transforms into the it's like the, you know, the troop builder, the stormtrooper type. And it's just a really fun toy. It's fun to transform and it doesn't have a whole lot of the kibble hanging off. So in robot form and in car form, it looks legit and looks like the show. And I, I wrote a review up of it, and it, it's a really awesome one. Nice. That, that sounds cool. Ironically, I got my nephew some prime toys for Christmas oh, for his birthday a couple like a couple of months back. Nice. They are good quality. Yeah, they are. Hasbro good. make good stuff. Mm. We'll continue on with that thought. Oh, okay. Uh, I gave mine, even though it's not strictly a toy. I was told before we recorded this, I wasn't allowed to count this in video games, so I was like, fine, I'll include it in toy. I gave my best toy release to the Wii U games console. Why? It's the Wii U games console, enough said. <laughs> Hashtag, I agree with them all. Yeah, pretty much. But yeah, yeah my best toy is the Wii U. Um, also, as a runner-up, I'd like <laughs> to give, or honorable mention, as it were, I'd like to um, kind of give this award to the uh, Harry Potter Wizards collection, the, the Blu-ray DVD collection of the movies. I think it's friggin' enormous, and it's friggin' awesome. Just all the stuff you get in it, I think qualifies it as a toy, like the collectibles and stuff. Like, it's high-quality stuff that they put in there, too, which I was thoroughly impressed with. Totally worth the money. Yeah, let's go ahead, Jim. So, uh, for mine... Um, I, t- I too gave it to a video game system because it's the only thing closer to a toy that I've bought this year. Um, I bought the new uh, 500 gigabyte PlayStation 3, as I mentioned earlier during the last award when I talked about Assassin's Creed 3. It was the Assassin's Creed 3 bundle, quote unquote. Oh, nice. And if you've got a PS3, you need to get yourself a little like keypad to type on that. <laughs> you know, I already have that, but hilarious. Anyway, so, um, yes, but yes, it's a uh, it, it's a good system. Um. I do like the system a lot. Um, it's actually a top loader, which is a little different, but um, it does make it easier to you can take games in and out without having to have the system powered on, which is useful. Um, not just games, DVDs, whatever you put in there. Um, I said 500 gig, which is the biggest memory that a PS3 has ever had, so the chances of using that up are slim to none. <clears throat> Again, because you have what? It's not the biggest hard drive a PS3's ever well, That it comes with, I think he's saying. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I, I, well, I know people have bought them with like terabyte fucking hard drives, but I mean the one that it comes with, excuse me. Okay. Man, it's the biggest hard drive it comes with so far, and uh, it's, it's been pretty good so far. You know, the menus are still about the same. 
they added a couple new features on there. There's a um, – on the video options where they previously – they uh, they've always had Netflix on there, and they previously had a uh, – it was another one on there. They added on Hulu Plus, and I think uh, I think there's a YouTube thing on there or something. They added one other thing on there for uh, video streaming and uh, useful stuff like that. So they've enhanced those features a little bit. Um, yep. Which that stuff you have to go to the store on the other PSVs and manually download it. Yep. Um, also, like I said, they upgraded the store on all PS3s. Um, that that happened after I got this one, and uh, I, I do like the new store look of the PlayStation Store. That looks pretty cool too. The organization is easy to find stuff. So we use. Exactly... Yeah. I, I agree though. The new layout is cool. Yeah, it probably is. Um, the, the only the one thing you might consider downside of this uh, the new P, this PS3 is apparently it only it only has two USB ports instead of the four of the older versions. Mm-hmm. But really, I guess I don't think a lot of you were necessarily using all those slots. So, to be fair, the one I've got, which is an old fat one, with the PS3, that only has two ports on the front. Really? Because the former one, the former one I had, that was a Gen One, sixty gig, had four ports on the front. But okay. Yeah, mine mine wasn't one of the Gen One ones. Mine was re-released like later on when they brought out like the eighty gigabyte one with the like two ports at the front, like the che- the cheaper ones. Once um, what? Because I didn't buy a PS3 when it first came out. So I had loads of problems with that console until they fixed them all. Right. Anyway, right so, yeah. so yeah, PS3. Yeah, on your gig. What? Oh, okay. Um. Best. Uh, next award here is the best of our videos. That's any videos that were done for the X Pound this year. Um, that includes a wide variety of things because this year, of course, we went from being the wrestling X Pound to the X-Pound, which wi- widely opened up the uh, types of videos that we do, so we've uh, really expanded on that. He gave so... us choices for this award. <laughs> yep. So, I'm um, thinking about the best of our videos. Um, I'm thinking back to all the videos that we've, uh, the various videos we did that were uh, some, there's a lot of good ones here and there. Um, I noticed a personally thinking on the reviews that we've done because we were they were recorded simultaneously i'm counting them as one um i like enjoyed the um as part of our power rangers month we reviewed the two power rangers films i thought those were very good reviews where we got a lot of i mean i did most of the talking i know i'm being a little allowing it but um you know we got really in depth looking at the movies and you know going back and forth and really analyzing i thought that was that was really well um had, had i thought had i thought i wouldn't get yelled at i would have given it to the entirety of power rangers month but i wanted it to be specific so um, the, the power just film reviews I thought were, were really good and uh, informative. Can I also point out, you said I thought it was just me being a little arrogant. Not a single one of us keyed up to disagree. <laughs> I didn't expect you to. I didn't expect you to. Did you say Molly? Yeah, I said Molly. Oh, okay then. Uh, mine I gave it to Crossover Conundrum. It was the first and won't be the last of our debate review of our debate videos we did. Basically, as we can tell you behind the scenes when we're recording this stuff, we tend to have disagreements over every little thing. There's always someone whining like, "Oh, targeting," or "Oh, heal me," or something. Looking at you, Marcus. No, I'm kidding. No, we normally end up arguing about <laughs> something with different points of views and stuff. Uh, but one review that's like a powder keg ready to just explode of us are disagreeing about stuff. We all agreed on perfectly and it went as smooth as possible. <laughs> and was unbelievably fun. Yep. It, it was a lot of fun. Unfortunately, Rick the one. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw back to that. And uh, for my... Best X Pound video was uh, when myself and Marcus Shadow answered the Next Generation Challenge of James Phoenix. I know <laughs> that uh, I know that some people don't like the the more story like videos, but I just it was fun to film and I don't know it just it I thought it was it actually came out really well, all things considered, and I it I, it was just really fun to do. And I agree with Richter. Um, I know it's kind of selfish and and you know because it's my video but it it was just a lot of fun to do it presented it, its own challenges some new ones from you know in an editor standpoint and a director standpoint and um you know we, we actually 
we actually wrote a script for it for one <laughs> and, and actually actually tried to stay to it and you know it was the most cohesive of the videos that we've done you know and it it was again it's like a clock i bet he liked it because he could hit me in it like i said it's the most cohesive unless you look at the clock there you go there you go we're in a tardis yeah. it's okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> And I, I will also say, don't worry about being arrogant, Marcus, with, oh, it was one of my videos. The rule for this was we had to have been in the videos anyway. <laughs> All of our videos are going to be one of our videos. It's True. the only option. Yeah, but it was one that I created, that I did the editing and the directing and the shooting and all that stuff for it. Well, you did a good job. You should be proud of it. Oh, thank you. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Mole's just building them up to tear them down. <laughs> nope. And on that note... Looks, that looks down on his worst video in green. Yeah. So no, gonna... I'm kidding. I'm not. It's like, don't worry. This one will come up again next video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm all with that. But anyway, moving on, uh, we're going to go to the best actor of 2012. Did he pick it? Huh? Yeah. Oh. He went second. Um, and so anyway, um, I chose Javier Bardem, who played the main villain Silva in uh, James Bond Skyfall, which was a fantastic movie. And if you're a fan of James Bond films at all, go watch this movie because it's chock full of uh, uh, Easter eggs for old school fans. And it was just it was very well written. And it's a really, really good reboot to the series, I think. And it's got a great cast. And then Javier Bardem did a phenomenal job as the villain. Anybody? Bueller? I'll, I'll go next. I gave mine to Andrew Garfield for The Amazing Spider-Man. Because I wanted to give The Amazing Spider-Man some sort of award. So that's what I did with the actor and actresses. I gave it to films I wanted to give awards to, but they weren't the best ones. But the people in it did a good job. He did a great job as Spider-Man. Unlike Tobey Maguire, when Spider-Man was sarcastic, he was sarcastic. He wasn't manically depressed. It didn't sound like Spider-Man was just, like, one phone call away from a suicide hotline or something. Yeah. He did a good job. He seemed like Spider-Man. He was Spider-Man. I give him props, though. Okay, for me, I went with... Uh... A voice actor, I went with Keith David, who does uh, Anderson from Mass Effect 3. Now, while I didn't technically play 3, I played the demo, and he talks in there, so that counts. <laughs> and I still say that Keith David has the most amazing voice, that if yes. I could have that voice, then holy, then you'd have your Ghost of Christmas future. That would be amazing. <laughs> yes. Oh, but your voice is already so silky and smooth. I know. His is better. <laughs> <laughs> Jim. Uh, I was debating on this one, um, trying to think about good actors. Um, initially, I was going to give it to Jeremy Renner because I saw him in Avengers and he did a great job as Hawkeye. And he was in a number of other movies this year that it looked like he did a great job, and though I haven't actually seen them. But Don't worry, we're getting to it. <laughs> fair enough. But um, aside from that, I ended up, uh, as, as I thought about it, I decided not to go in that direction. And I actually gave it to um, Risa Fawns for his portrayal of the lizard. Fair enough. I can agree with that. He, I, he, I was, he was great in that movie. He was good, yes. Um, the, fact that he, the fact that he portrayed the... Um, I mean... Okay, yes, the character was a slight Green Goblin rebuff because he had the whole split personality shit going on. But it was still really good the way he was like himself. And then he was the lizard and... you know. The way he portrayed that that caring for Peter, but uh, almost not because he didn't want Peter to get caught up in this world of you know all the shit that he was involved in with freaking Oscorp and everything else. So I thought he did a really good job uh, uh, you know, portraying that and making that uh, you know making that pretty obvious. I, I really like that. And yeah, one of the reasons that was that was good with the like portraying the mentor and stuff like that. The three D Blu Ray I have of the Amazing Spider Man. Points out from Andrew Garfield, where he mentions the guy you gave the award to was one of his icons or idols going into acting. So literally, he's working with someone he judges as a mentor in real life. 
as a mentor in the film, so he got to portray elements. <laughs> Both characters got to portray elements of, oh, look, he's this kid looking up to me, or, oh, look, this is the guy I want to be, which that adds a lot to the film. Nice. Sorry for going off my tangent there. Okay. <clears throat> That's cool. I know how boring it is when people talk on and on about the behind the scenes stuff. Check out our Power Rangers review for that. <laughs> <laughs> and having said that, Maul, take us out. I, I have to take us out? But you, you have the last award. Oh, okay. Well, I was, oh, yeah, yeah. That, no, I was thinking there was more than that, that one left, but I realized it's for the next video. But, <laughs> <laughs> the next one is Best Actress, which I gave it to Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, John- the next one is for Best Actress. <laughs> I gave it to Jennifer Lawrence for or Lawrence for Hunger Games as Katniss Everdeen. Because I like the Hunger Games. It's based on, what you call them, books. But it was still a good film. I, I enjoyed the film. I don't know whether or not she was true to the character from the book. I haven't read the book. However, however I liked the film and she was a strong female protagonist throughout the film. I gave my Best Actress award to Emma Stone, who played Gwen Stacy in The Amazing Spider-Man, just because she was probably the best part of that movie. I mean, well, her and Andrew Garfield, but just her portrayal of Gwen Stacy was so, so good. Um, they, they tried to keep elements from the classic Gwen Stacy from how she was portrayed in the comics, but then they modernized her. And so just having those two elements at play together... She brought them both in perfectly in sync, and it created the perfect character for the most part. It was, it was a thing of beauty to behold, and I'm not just talking about her body. <laughs> nah. Okay, for myself, I went with uh, another voice actress. I went with uh, <coughs> Tara Strong, who does a multitude of stuff, but uh, I thought she did a really good job as uh, Harley Quinn in the latest Batman game. Because she had big shoes to fill, but I thought she pulled it off and actually did a really good Harley Quinn. Big yeah, shoes big to fill? Is that a clown joke? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, when you said that, I was thinking of The Simpsons with Side Joe Bob. Big shoes to fill. Big shoes to fill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll close it off as we started. Uh, boring Man, go. Wow. Who are you calling Boring Man? Screw you. <laughs> <laughs> which robot master order are you which one is boring man <laughs> the hell uh, Mega Man 25th anniversary joke <laughs> ah okay I took me a second I thought that was what it was but um Great. also um I'll count it because the DLC came out but Arkham City came out October of 11 that's okay maybe maybe he's referring to the Wii U edition there you go. That's true. You're right. The Armored Edition. That's very true. But I digress. Uh, I have hashtag I agree with Marcus Shadow. I also gave it to Emma Stone for The Amazing Spider-Man. Um, I thought she did a great job in that movie. Uh, she was very convincing. She was very, you know... She, she was able to go from, you know... She, she portrayed the emotions of the character very well, going from the, you know, the the you know the happy Gwen Stacy to being, you know... How, how upset she was and concerned for Peter near the end and the whole, especially that scene near the end where she's all crying because she knows that her father made him promise not to be, that they wouldn't be together and stuff. So mm-hmm. I thought she did a great job. Take us out, Jim. All righty. Well, that is the end of uh, part one, I guess, of this uh, around the pound of our uh, year in review awards. That was all our best awards. Uh, stay tuned for part two, in which we will give all of our worst awards in effectively the same categories you just heard. And uh, that should certainly be interesting. So stay tuned for that. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, if you want to see more of our great reviews, head over to xpound.proboards.com. You can check out our reviews there. Or just check out the xpound on YouTube. Thank you very much. And, and follow uh, our Twitches below. Yes, and don't forget to go to our Twitter below, at, at the xpound. And I'm sure the Twitters of our individualities will be down there as well. Follow us. We'll tweet news. They'll probably be on the video. For... Unless Jim is lazy. What do you mean? Uh, well, they're kind of on our images. On the pictures. Touche, you're right. So therefore, yeah, follow us on Twitter. We, and uh, 
thanks for listening, and we'll uh, see you for the next video for uh, part two of the Worst Awards. See ya. Part two of the Yeah. Bye, everybody. See ya.